Hello everyone, and welcome to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Today, we're going to look at habits of the most successful students. And you might be surprised to know what some of those habits are. Habit number one is some kind of daily encounter or interaction with English. One of the biggest problems that I hear from my students is, oh, I've no time. I've no time to write. I've no time to study. I've no time to do anything. I ask them, have you been doing your shadowing? Oh, no, no, no time. Have you done your homework? No, 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 sorry, but impossible. No, no, I have no time to do that. And then, of course, the question comes up, well, if you have no time to do these things, then how do you expect your English to get better? Your daily encounter with English doesn't have to be sitting down for two hours writing an essay, but it has to be some kind of authentic, meaningful encounter. For example, if you're learning English to emigrate, why would you want to spend one hour a day reading a magazine about cows or wildlife? Maybe that's your thing. Maybe that's what you like to read. But do you really think that that's going to help you if you have no background knowledge or interest in wildlife? Why do it? So the information that you choose to practice with has to be something that you actually want to do. And that in turn helps you to solve the problem of time. Because if you really want to do something, then you'll do it. But if English becomes just another chore or job in your daily life, then of course there's really no point. Because you'll start it and then you think, you know what, I really don't have time for this. Why, why do I want to read a page of Harry Potter when I hate Harry Potter, when I could be earning money? These, these kinds of thoughts indicate a very wrong starting point when it comes to learning. Learning should be fun. It should be something that you come to with a sense of joy and a sense of happiness. It's something that you should look forward to every day. And that's not because it's English, but it's because the thing that you're studying is something that you actually feel that you connect with, something which you are happy with. When you come to studying English with a sense of joy, time really doesn't come into it. It's like spending time with a friend. You're happy. And after you do it, you feel somehow more peaceful because you know you've done something. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to spend an hour a day, but it does mean that you have to spend, perhaps, um, something like even 5, 10, 15 minutes. You could take a paragraph of your favorite book, or you could maybe try to um, take a verse of your favorite poem, if that means more to you than spending an hour with an IELTS essay about why do you think young people use computers, then you should definitely do it. Because practice means connecting. It, it doesn't mean uh, simply reciting words until you get them inside your mind. This brings us to a very nice second point, which is about the philosophy of learning. Many people just don't get this. Some people think that you should just recite words up, down, left, right, backwards, forwards, until they get them inside what they think 
is their problematic mind. And again, academically, that's how we're taught to learn. But if you look at children, it, it, is that really what they do? The children really uh, have this thing whereby they listen to words and work with them till they get inside their heads, heads that they've already defined as thick or stupid. Well, no, children are very free. They don't think about their minds, actually, because they can't read or write. They just joyfully hear and say. And this is something that we've lost, which brings us back again to shadowing, hearing and saying innocently, with a great sense of joy, putting the world outside the door to do this. All of these kind of things help us to approach English learning with happiness. And that, I think, is absolutely necessary. So there's two points we've already picked up here. One point is about reviewing the material that you have. And secondly, reviewing how you feel about yourself. If you've defined yourself as somebody who um, has a difficult mind, which you must cram full of grammar and words, that is not an approach to learning. Learning has to be about some kind of joy-filled moment where you approach something in a second language that is going to make you happy. That could be connecting with other people in that second language. It could be just coming to the table with an open mind, ready to learn something, maybe not the thing that you first thought about. Another habit which successful students have is to bring to the table their daily lives. Now, some students have asked me whether they should keep a diary and they want to write all the things that happened to them in that diary. I'm actually against that idea, and the reason why is because if you only write about yourself, you very quickly run out of things to write about. I mean, let's be honest, none of us have the lives of rock stars, superstars, or Queen Elizabeth, and I think even they would have problems remembering what they did during the day. Um, so when I say bring to the table your life, I mean, you have to be ready to be the source of your own material. So it's not about just writing, oh, yesterday I went to the supermarket, today I went to the butchers, and then I went to buy some fish. That would be a very dull essay indeed. But it's about looking around you and seeing what you could write about, what you could describe, what you could connect with. Maybe not even necessarily about things in your room. You could look out the window, you could des decide to describe the neighbours going by, or you could even talk to that English neighbour that you might have, or you might go looking for some kind of English partner to discuss things with. But you need to bring yourself somehow. I think too many of us, what we do is we kind of separate our lives into bits. This bit is where I learn English at half six in the morning. This bit, I have a different face. I am an employee between nine and five. And in this bit, I'm a sports person when I go to play basketball between six and seven. And this bit is when I spend time with the family, when I'm a family man or woman. You see, we've kind of categorized our lives up into all these little bits. One thing which social media has taught us is to try to integrate our lives, to bring back a sense of unity. And you would be really surprised how that can help you with your English because it gives you more source material to write about. It gives you a better sense of integration. And it also helps you to communicate, be open and authentic with other people. And 
this kind of stuff is really personal. It's up to you to reflect on exactly how it affects you. But integration, bringing all of the bits of your life together might be a really good place. Someone told me the other day about a book which I think is called The Art of Being Disliked or uh, it's a some similar title. Let me just check. Yes, it's called The Courage to be Disliked. The Courage to be Disliked. And this book talks about transforming ourselves so that we can be more authentic. And I know that by saying this, we've kind of wandered away a little bit from uh, learning English. But really, these kind of things are very important if you want to be successful. So we've spoken about a few things today. The first point really was about that daily encounter that you have with English and how that daily encounter must be an authentic encounter. Five minutes of an authentic encounter is far better than half an hour staring at a page. Some of us are very creative and we need inspiration. We need a muse to bring us uh, to some kind of authenticity with learning. A muse, a sense of inspiration. Secondly, uh, we spoke about the philosophy of learning and how our view of ourselves can affect how and what we learn. If we just see ourselves as little blobs with a mind which has to be crammed full of words that we'll probably never use, then of course there's not a lot of authenticity in that. <clears throat> we then spoke about how integration and transformation, bringing all of the bits of your life together, even if some people don't like that, even if some people can't really um, like the fact that you're you're being one person. Uh, I, I think that some people, you know, they, they put labels on us, put us in a box and expect us to act in a certain way. And when we don't do that, they sometimes are very shocked and surprised. I know that I have a friend who likes the fact that I make them laugh, but they don't want to know anything else about my life. You know, they just want me to make them laugh. And whilst that sounds nice, um, it's quite exhausting at times. So in order to gain real friendship with other people, you need to reveal yourself who you are. And you would be surprised how much peace of mind that brings you when it comes to th something like English learning, because you'll feel that you're coming to this, you're coming to the table of learning from a sense of happiness and authenticity. And you might think, well, Teacher Joseph's gone a bit crazy with this because we all have a sense of authenticity. And it's true that people outside of the UK are much better at this than people inside the UK. I think um, the more developed the country, the less connected people are to anything outside of themselves. Finally, I just want to say that um, this idea that, oh, English is exhausting, English is hard work, English is difficult, it's only like that because that's the way you've labeled it and pictured it. It doesn't have to be that way. If you come to this with a sense of joy, English can actually become very light and enjoyable. It's only when you see a dictionary full of words that you can't say that you feel a bit intimidated. But then I think most native speakers wouldn't necessarily have a dictionary full of words that they're thinking, oh, I have to learn these. Most people use very few words daily. Um, so <laughs> it's not going to be possible for you to learn every word in the English language. And if you did you would be a bit strange because the rest of us don't know what all those words are. So I hope these tips have helped you. Um, really, it's all about 
you much less than it is all about your English and the approach that you take. And finally, just to say, if you have that sense of joy, then it, of course, will help you in other areas of your life as well, far beyond learning English. It will make your English learning much easier and also you will be able to come to an exam with a sense of authenticity rather than just trying to, as we say in English, wing it, meaning try to do something just to pass without uh, really thinking. Authenticity can also bring you great joy when it comes to things like job interviews, English exams, um, the way you lead your life. So it's something for you to think about. Learning English um, should be giving you a sense of joy and uh, that sense of joy should be extended to all areas of your life. And if you don't feel the joy, something's wrong and the problem might not be English. All right then, there we are. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm sorry it's been a bit long, but I think it had to be said. See you all soon. Bye-bye.